If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this motherfucking episode of Mind Pump. That was, that was so vulgar. It was very vulgar. Yeah. For the first 45 minutes of this episode, we do our introductory conversation. Talk about the time I forgot to pick up my kids. Oh, man. Yep. The, <laughs> the that, panic. It's Bad that father. Delta 8 tetrahydrocannabidiol. <laughs> Good old Delta 8. We talk about the time Adam got uh, kind of pissed off Katrina a little bit by getting, uh, not getting excited by a gift she gave him, but getting excited by a gift someone else gave him. Yeah. What a jerk. <laughs> Don't you do work this. on your uh, uh, excitement. I almost got in a fight with hippies this morning at Whole Foods. Talk about that a little bit. That we're talking about a smelly kerfuffle. We're talking about Doug's Organifi Gold Juice Macadamia Nut Sleep Aid. Actually, the gold juice is phenomenal to take before bed. It's got natural ingredients, and they're designed to reduce inflammation and give you a better night's rest. And it tastes bomb. We are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump, enter the code Mind Pump, you'll get 20% off the gold juice and anything else in their store. Then Justin gives us an update about his chicken farm. Yeah. And we also talk about Justin's night at the opera, smelling like cat piss. <laughs> <laughs> what a great night. And Adam and I talk about our workouts. I also talked about Map Split and the difference between Map Split and what I've done in the past. You can find Map Split at mindpumpmedia.com. And then we get into the questions. The first question was uh, Are there any benefits to fasting? For a couple hours uh, after a workout, there may be there may be some hormonal changes as well. We talk about Everly Well in that part of the episode. If you go to everlywell.com, you can enter the code Mind Pump and get a discount off of any hormone test. I feel like we mentioned all of our sponsors. We kind of did. We mentioned Juve, right? You go to joovv.com forward slash Mind Pump. That is the red light therapy that Adam's using yeah. to raise his testosterone. I think Justin mentioned ButcherBox again. I did. I couldn't help it. ButcherBox uh, provides quality grass-fed meats to your home. ButcherBox.com forward slash Mind Pump. You will get free bacon for life forever. Hurry and up because I'm eating it all. $10 off your first order and free shipping. The next question was, what are the benefits of keeping your NEAT? NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. It's neato. Relatively high during a bulk. Are there any benefits to doing so? There actually are. We talk about it in this part of the episode. We also answer the question, somebody wants to know that, you know, hey, look, in order to lose weight, you got to be in a caloric deficit. But then we talk about reverse dieting, where you increase your calories and decrease your activity. That makes you leaner. You guys aren't making huh? any sense. Yes, we are. Listen, and we'll teach you how. Hmm. And the final question, somebody wants to know why I haven't competed in bodybuilding. Mm, yeah, yeah, why haven't I done that yet? Because I look like a bodybuilder, right? No, you have all the baseball cards. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, except it's not baseball. Six foot 190, be the biggest bodybuilder of all yes. time. Yes. <laughs> also, one day left. It's the final day, Adam. You need to do your final thing. Final day! It's the, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah! it's, oh, it's the final right. day. To get maps anywhere at 50% off. We took the total price, cut it in half. It's at mindpumpmedia.com. We also have bundles. This is where we take multiple maps programs, put them together. We have one specifically to help people build a bigger butt. We have one for people who want to become awesome athletes, but also who want to look like bodybuilders. We call it the sexy athlete bundle. And then, of course, we have our super bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. We take multiple maps programs. We discount the price. Uh, it's the best deal you're going to get on our site. You can find all of those at mindpumpmedia.com. So what I was telling you guys is uh, that vape pen that your, bro- your buddy brought us, mm. what he said it's pure. Delta 9. I, no, Delta, Delta 8. eight. Well, so I didn't know this. So regular THC, well, I knew this. Regular THC is the, the full name of it is Delta 9 Tetrahydra. Cannabidiol, I think, or cannab- cannabidiol. I'm I believe you so. Didn't know that. There's another version of THC that's delta eight, and it's like two. It's like two molecules off, or two atoms differently. So it's a, it's a different version of THC, and it's supposed to be a little bit different, but yeah. maybe not that much. And so he's talking to us and saying, 
oh, this one's like super mild. Yeah, and, no big deal. Yeah, you do this one, and you're kind of like lifted, and you're you know your 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 appetite gets stimulated a little bit, stimulated a little bit. It's better for nausea, this, that, and the other. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'll take the Delta Eight improves memory THC vape pen. I'll give that one a shot. Yeah, and. <laughs> I hit that thing, and uh, and you know I have a pretty high tolerance. To, well, I guess compared to, uh, to the average person, it's a high tolerance. But compared to the average pot smoker, it's probably average or whatever. I'd say so it's I, low. Yeah, well, compared to yeah, you're right. Compared right, to most people, because I don't even think mine's very high. And mine's higher than yours. Yeah. So, so I took There's a some professionals, out dude. There. I took a <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. I took a my hit off brother. that thing, dude, and uh, fucking forgot to pick up my kids. That's how high. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Small I beast. laughed, but that's like, oh my god, did you just panic? Well, or no, what? no, because there somebody were, somebody picked them up. No, though. luckily they're with my my parents, yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. all good. Got it. And then I'm like, oh well, I'm not gonna go get them now. I'm gonna wait a little bit because at least you remembered you had kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I, mean? like, I didn't get I've that been high. that high. <laughs> <laughs> you forget your own name. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I have a family. Yeah. No, dude, Weird. I I hit it and I was just like, oh my god, where am I? So I don't know if it's. The strength of the pen that we used, or if it's that Delta Eight well, hits I, me that way. I also think. Did it's, you try it? I mean, it was a brand new stimulus. I, I did. I, I just took a couple uh, when we were actually. Remember, we recorded with him like a little pilot uh, marijuana episode, and I took a couple puffs. I didn't have very many. It didn't do much to you. Uh, I mean, I was I was nice. You know what I'm saying? That was cool, but I wasn't trying to get like super lifted off of it. So I just had a couple puffs off it. Just, to, but what I could tell right away. Um, in comparison to some of the other vape pens that we've messed with, is just the purity of it, and the, so this, so because it's really pure, it's going to be a lot stronger too. So it's less plant matter. It might be well, that I took a like a f- big ass rip. That's the other thing too. It's yeah. not dosed like doses, yeah. so you could sit there and draw on it till you're blue in the face, which is what I did. Right, uh, and so yeah. you took it. You probably took a big yeah. rip of it. And right? I hate that, dude. I hate it when, and I you know because you know when you when you take a hit off a vape pen or whatever, it takes. To get the full like impact, it takes between five to ten minutes, right? Five to ten minutes is when you—that's about as high as you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. But I could tell within the first minute, like the first minute, I'm like, oh, I'm already feeling like this. Yeah. This is gonna be too much. This is accelerating. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit too much. And sure enough, five to ten minutes later, I love when my <laughs> I love when my boy comes to town. And he comes to drop off. Did you see my little my new <laughs> thing? Cute. Oh my god, uh, dude! Yeah. Like you know what's so funny, Katrina? This shout out to Katrina right here. She can get mad when she hears this. So uh, if you guys don't know this, like I'm the worst gift receiver right just, yeah, like, just yeah. oh i know this right right yeah, you guys know that right i'm terrible yeah. i'm terrible i and, just throw it at you now right and katrina uh she just you like to re- you don't like to receive i don't i'm just yeah. it's an awkward thing for those that have never been yeah. not been listening to mind pumps at the beginning there's story behind all that the, the short version of that is as a kid i numb myself during holidays and birthdays because it was a lot of drama in my family a lot of fighting going on we didn't have money a lot of times uh, during that time so as a kid you you get used to that and you decide to, you so i numb myself to gift receiving and not care about it. Now that I've gotten older and I've had relationships and people get things for me, I have this real awkward, it's another awkward thing that I get with when someone gives me something. I just, I don't have this real authentic response because I've numbed myself for so many years. You just feel awkward? Yeah. Yeah, you, and the reason why I feel awkward is because I know they're looking for a response. Like, you know when someone, you people give you oh, something, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. like give it to you and they're like looking yeah, at you. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. okay, what do you think? You, what do you think? Right, do you yeah, like yeah, it? And I'm like, yeah. oh, cool, I like it. Like you know, puppy. and they're like, that's like, it? No, you don't. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, that's all I get. That's cool. That's all I get. And so the first time that Brian came into town, uh, actually he uh, sent it over to me and Katrina was there and she saw me open it. And I got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it totally like, wait a minute i thought you didn't like gifts oh dude oh, it just no. fucked me right she's yeah. like she looks at me and she's like really yeah. over some stupid weed right <laughs> like, 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 really you get all excited like that i'm like yeah well, huh, no this is like you didn't have to do and just like i can't believe all the things that i get you and so now she's compares everything to that she's that, like you didn't get yeah. excited about the keychain with the picture of me and you on it yeah so I'm actually I'm I'm actually wearing uh, the first gift that Katrina ever purchased me. So the for, purchased for me. So it's this. Uh, oh, I was gonna say I can. I was looking at your clothes, and so it's uh, a necklace. Yeah, it's a it's a necklace from it's a it's like dog tags from Tiffany, right? And I remember when she got it for me. It was on New Year's. It was our first New Year's that we spent together, and totally was not expecting a gift. This is the first time she buys me something. It's a real obviously a really. Did nice you buy gift. her something? No. Or, oh, okay. no. It's fucking New Year's. Who the fuck buys gifts on New Year's for or, or new girlfriends? Yeah, Katrina does. I was good for anal. Yeah. Right. Whoa! <laughs> That's what? my move on New Year's. Whoa! Is that your year? Is it yeah. Gary? It's tradition. Yeah, I was gonna. 
<laughs> some years, some successful. <laughs> Most years, I'm not. Is, it, is, yeah. is that because you get a really drunk and it's the sneak attack? Yeah. That's, no, that's, that's, that's part, part of the process. How, how not to do anal yeah. is a sneak attack, bro. It kind of determines how the whole rest of the year is going to play out. Well, I, no wonder. It's like Groundhog's Day. No, yeah. sure. no wonder it's been terrible. Yeah, yeah. You it's can't, been bad. It's you been bad. The, you can't surprise someone with a butt yeah. sex. Lot, lots of shade. Is that so? <laughs> help her. School me on this, right? Because I'm not. I'm yeah. not like really married here. So, right, right, right. Uh, is are these are these things that you you put in the like uh, contract when oh. you first when you first? Oh, get you to, don't write anything down, bro. You don't write it down, but no, it's like no. do you express this spontaneous. Like, you know, birthdays, holidays. Like, I mean, there's, there's a process to it. There so, is. Yeah. Like is it a negotiation thing, or is it just like I mean, it's, it's expected? It kind of knows it's coming, right? So there's like different strategies every year. You know? <laughs> Like there's different places, locations, like timing. You know, I might have to like, do like build things. So, do you have an example of like a successful a successful story and a non successful story? Well, like what you did to lead up. I mean, school some of these young men out there that are trying to get anal sex on New Year's. What does well, that look like? Really got to provide a comfortable environment, and I found that to be really helpful. Like uh, as far as like comfortable, like the seat, like or like comfortable, like she's no, like yeah, like pillows, you know, quietness. <laughs> um, get rid of the kids. You know that really does help. Gar- garbage bags on the floor, yeah. plastic. You want to make sure there's no, yeah, no mess. And just you know, really just start, start, start the drinks slow. You know, start them real slow and gradual, and then um, you know, get a little heavier handed. Well, what do you, what do you not do then? <laughs> what, what should you not do if you're trying to get anal sex? <sighs> get in an argument. <laughs> <laughs> that never works. That's for sure going to make that not happen. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, you just you know eat Mexican food beforehand. You, you kind of know, like as that. you wake up, if it's like if it's that day, you know, like this is the day. Like this, I, I should I should go for it. You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyway, yeah, honestly, bro, it's it's it, it, it literally it's like every day, you know, you just kind of weigh it out. You know, it's it's, it's it, you have to be loose about it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want, yeah. I don't even remember why I was telling the gift. You were story. talking about <laughs> I was telling the gift story. This guy took it to Angel New Saturday. Year's. New Year's, you get your gift. She gives it to you. Yeah, so she's making sure you're listening. So that was the first time that she experienced this at this point we're early on in our relationship we i think we've only been dating a few did she mo- say something like why weren't you happy oh yeah no i totally offended her like she was like you could tell she was like really upset like too and, and later on we talked about this like we're early on in the relationship so it wasn't like she got pissed right then there it was like i just bought this guy i, I can't i'm sure it's not cheap you know it's a tiffany necklace i saw the box you know i'm opening it up mm-hmm. so i know it's nice and i really liked it you know it was, it was something that i would totally wear i wear it still have it and so uh, but I was like, <laughs> she's just giving you anal. Yeah. <laughs> that was way better. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't wear it. <laughs> Happy well, maybe New Year. For a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm terrible at at receiving gifts, but uh, for some reason, when when someone gets me cannabis, I tend to get uh, more excited than uh, than usual. I guess. So she's seen that in my. She saw that look in my face. So what was special about the box that he gave you? Well, so it's custom. So yeah. this is this box is like. Uh, so typically he just puts it in. You know. Uh, let me explain what my drug dealer does here. So he he lays out like all the different strains and then they're separated by phenotypes and then they're all jarred out in eights for me. So what makes this really great for a, a connoisseur smoker like myself is it a lot, which, and I'm always, I'm very cautious and careful of, you know, my habit of it. The same way we talk about caffeine and coffee and things like that. If I find myself using too much of it it's it's taking it's taking up too much of my life i'm I, it's I'm, i don't care whether it has addictive properties or not the it also loses its uh, the benefits the right effects. exactly mean, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very aware of this well, one of the ways to to help mitigate this is to rotate through strains and so i have this very organized box that's done and it's everything is top grade so everything's organically grown everything's super top notch so it's like and i can bounce from straight so it allows me to smoke the minimal amount and get the same effect that I got like the very first time that I had it, which is really fucking cool. And then he customly made it to where the top of it is designed to grind up and roll on it, which is really cool for me because I don't know how to roll. I don't know how to roll a joint. Um, Everybody who hangs out with me makes fun of me because that's like now that a mind pump talks openly about cannabis, probably the number one thing that I get when I meet people is like, hey, dude, I just want to smoke weed with you. Like it's, <laughs> that's good. And I'm like, well, it's like fucking two o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday. Like yeah. <laughs> maybe sometime when we catch each other on the weekend or something, I got shit to do today. Right. But so anyways, uh, Katrina is uh, and I don't know how to roll. So people look at me and think I'm going to be able to twist up their shit. And I'm like, I can't help you out here, dude. You got my Katrina is. 
the official roller. So I was really excited to show her the box because I thought she would be really excited because it's a, got a rolling platform for her that she didn't have before. Is that why you're wearing the <laughs> necklace today? <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> Were well, you in the doghouse? No, 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 no. I brought it. I brought it out like maybe two or three months ago. I've been. I found it and I was like, oh, I haven't, I haven't wore this. So I'm going to bring it back. I remember the gift I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you dig. I love the gift. I, I got love a sweater it. like Dude, that. Dude, I didn't tell you guys what happened and why I was a little bit late to the meeting this morning. I, uh, was, I was saving it because I, I was going to tell you guys, but I'm like, ah, I'm going to wait till we I knew there'd have to be a story. Dude, almost. <laughs> I almost got in a fight with two hippies. What? Wow. Yeah. So that would have been easy. Yeah. So I pull up to Whole Foods to get some oatmeal and. What would uh, that smell like, Justin? If, lots of onions. Turmeric and onions? Yeah. It's yeah. turmeric, yeah. onions, and Birkenstock. <laughs> I, I, I'm pulling into, into Whole Foods. It's accurate. And I was going to get you know oatmeal and some chicken, just something to eat while we're having our meeting. And I'm pulling in, and the parking lot at this Whole Foods over here is fucking terrible. It can be packed, and it's just, it's a very poorly organized uh, parking lot. So I'm pulling in and I have exactly like seven minutes to be able to go in, get what I need, leave and get here on time. And I don't like being late. I hate being late uh, to anything. So I'm like, I got to hurry, man. I'm not about to drive around the stupid parking lot to try to find parking. So I pull in the, the electric car parking spots with my, you know, gas powered Jetta. You pulled an Atom. Yeah, I did. I actually did the, uh, pull an Atom. So yeah. here's what happened. All right. So I pull in to the electric car, you know, spot. Obviously, yeah. my car's not electric. <laughs> these, Adam, these, just, just for everybody Hold on, no, 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 no. Can I'm we gonna, tell what Adam did before yours? It. Okay. No, I got to tell right, it. Because right, right. I did get this move from Adam. So yes, I pull yes. in, I park, and there are these two dudes that are like, I mean, uber hippies, like dreadlocks, freaking the nose piercing. Parking the, socks. Yeah, dude. Like, Tumeric smelling. Yeah, probably 150. Everything's 100% hemp. Yeah, um, probably 150 pounds combined, the two of them, and <laughs> yeah. testosterone levels of, you know, a, a 13-year-old female uh, girl, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they're kind of standing there and they're like judging me, right? Automatically. <laughs> by the way, there's like 10 electric car spaces that are open. All right, fucker? So I'm not like blocking the last one. And it's not a handicapped yeah. Place it's and it's for, per it's, it's the prince. It's a hundred percent legal to do that. Yeah, Just, everybody knows that. There's yeah, no get, laws that say you can't park. Yeah, and I get it. I'm being kind of a whatever, but they're all a bunch of a. It's not a handicap one. And fuck you with your electric car. Okay, so I pull in, I park, <laughs> and I park my car, and they're both like. <sighs> And they're like, that's for electric cars. I hope you realize that's just for electric cars. So I said, oh, yeah, I know. And I got the, I got the, the plug or whatever. It looks like a gas pump, but it's not. And I did what Adam does, which is I open my window. And I <laughs> put it in the window. I just put it in the window and I close the door. <laughs> and, so, and that's it. And I walked in. I got my stuff. And when I walked back out, they were both standing there. And they're both like, oh, that's great. They're like, dick. And I am look back at them like, dick. Back to them. Yeah. And I just drove off. I'm like, what, yeah. what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I love, I good love move. That. Good that's move. why I was late. I had to, <laughs> like I had that's to a good excuse. <laughs> I had to plug in my Lucky thing, guy. Dude, speaking of weed, so do you guys know? Do you guys see what's going on in some of these uh, states right now that are legalizing cannabis? No. Okay, so there was a court. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to figure out where it was. Um, it was a 2000 in 2016. There was a U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals that made a decision on whether or not medical marijuana card holders should also be allowed to own a gun, okay? And they said no. <laughs> what? what? Yes, which is in fucking sane because yeah. I <laughs> can 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 cannabis have some bad effects on people? Yes. I've never seen anybody yeah. get violent or do anything crazy. I don't crazy. feel like that's a motivating way more agent. dangerous than, than with for yeah. someone who's drinking and has a gun than so fact, maybe if you're playing like Goldeneye yeah. You yeah, just, you know. yeah. In fact, if if you had violent people and you just blasted them with a bunch of weed smoke, they would become nonviolent. You know what I mean? Yeah. I almost yeah, yeah. feel like that would be a cure. But anyway, there's this. Some of these states are saying, "Hey, if you get a medical marijuana card or you smoke weed and you have a gun, you're breaking the, like the law. Like you can't have both." I get Which what I think is insane. I get what they're trying to do, though, right? It's a complete it's a, assault. It's a and stupid way of doing it, but you do get what they're trying to do. They're trying to—they're just infringing on your liberty, hundred percent. I agree, but I what they're—it's a—it's a stupid way to resolve what they're trying. What they're trying to do is get all the drug, all the black market off, right? All the drug dealers that are running around and that they're—they've got their cards, so they're protecting themselves legally to carry marijuana around. But right. then they're still doing black. What makes market me shit. mad about this is that it's just a stupid way. Well, to Well, they do drive it. it more underground. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They end up driving. 
moving things. Well, we're watching around. that happen right now. I mean, yesterday, yesterday when Brian was over here and we were talking to that, I mean, he has his pulse on the business a lot more than I do now. He's in the and, business. Yeah, right. So he's he's right in the thick of it. And it's crazy what you're seeing. What's happening is it's it's getting to the point where it's becoming so competitive that it's scarier shit's happening. Like I was asking him, he's saying that theft is becoming really big because mm. the mar- the market has gone down so much as far as the price of what you would buy like a pound of marijuana for. Didn't he say there was like federal raids that were going on? Like they were just coming in. Well, well what it is, is this has been happening since I was a part right, of it. but, but it, that's it, still like prevalent. So what it, what's happened is is that they've they've legalized it recreationally, but they've passed so many insane regulations around it that it's impo- it's almost impossible to follow every single one. At any given moment a, a sheriff can come in and find one thing that you're in violation of, something stupid. Yeah. And because of that, they can shut you down. And you're giving these people, you're giving the sheriffs and the, the state and whoever lots of power. And it's it's like that with a look. I'll, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. So I had a but I had a client who used to own all these uh, uh, shop, all these grocery stores and shopping centers. Very very wealthy man. And he got hit with three lawsuits from the same. Uh, lawyer and what this lawyer would do is he would go inside retail stores with a tape measure he'd go in the bathroom and he'd measure the mirror the distance between the mirror and the sink the doorknob the everything and if it was off by whatever a half an inch or an inch off of ADA compliance which is the uh, American with Disabilities Act compliance he could take you to court you would have to fight it in court which would probably cost you a hundred thousand dollars or you could pay him twenty thousand dollars and fix it, right? And so this Good guy's old muscle tactic. This guy's making a shit ton of money going around with a tape measure and saying, mm. and literally he was off like a couple inches here and there, and that's because the regulations are so t- so big and so many of them that it's almost impossible to follow all of them. Mm. I mean, it's crazy how much money it costs businesses just to follow. And so that's what they've done with the cannabis industry, mm-hmm. and all they're doing is ensuring that there's a very vibrant, powerful black market because right, when that hasn't gone away at all. Well, I mean, it's like it's almost like some of these legal businesses are also doing black market stuff. That was what was so, going on with when I was there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, back, yeah. A lot of backdoor stuff. It's crazy. Like it's like uh, like banks won't take your money, right? Yeah. So if you're what are you if, gonna do with it? If you're a if you're a business and you want to pay taxes and you're trying to pay taxes, but then banks also won't take your money. Now you're stuck in this weird situation of like, what do I do with this? You know, eight hundred thousand dollars that I have over my, you know the last five months of business. What do I do with that? And so a lot of these businesses have to figure out how to launder it or how to hide it or whatever to try and make themselves legal. It's, it's stupid. You know what? I've got a bone to pick with you, motherfuckers. Oh yeah. So Boner? today was uh, our day for our Organifi commercial, and I went to get the gold juice that was here in the studio, and it's no longer here. So which one of you fuckers took the gold? Who juice? do you think, dude? Obviously, is I. Is it you, Doug, or is it you? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no. Actually, no, no. yeah, it's a good call. Well, I know Doug. Doug's guilty of spilling shit on his carpet. Right. So is it you who's who's taking? I the keep last all my supplements at home. Is it you who's taking the last gold juice? I confess. Ah, I didn't do it. I knew it. You know what we should do? Because I'm with you, Adam. This is what we should do. Let's add up. Let's total a tally of the value of the things that we've taken to our house that we haven't shared with people. (laughs) For example, you took a gold juice. I think it's like $30. I took some audit equipment. Yeah. yeah, I took some protein powders. And then Adam took the $3,000 juve light. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's right. Yeah. And... Uh, a few other things. I know you've come in sometime. Oh, like, wow, where'd called you get, out, bro. Where'd you get that new shit, Adam? Yeah. That expensive piece yeah. of technology. I just have it shipped to my house. What's yeah. the most expensive? That's yeah, like I'll a, take that. I got a backdoor, you fuckers, yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? Adam's like, like, oh, dude. He's like, fuck, bro. I get such good sleep with these infrared blankets. That yeah. how, the, how the fuck did you get infrared blankets? I know, right? Plural. Blankets. Uh, yeah. I got oh, these yeah. new solar panels. Yeah. That they're, you know, so they're I, got so many, I got so many of them that yeah. some, I, my dog uses some of, some of them. What the fuck, bro? I make sure all the cool brand new come to my House, but it's if I have cool. to do supplements, I mean, man, the supplements do not last around here because well, you got an yeah. addiction with them. Yeah. Well, the gold and juice. And I think you're true. rubbing off on Doug. The gold juice for sleep is fucking amazing. You got to see this guy at conventions. That's what oh, he was man. saying. Is that when you normally have it, Doug? Yeah, last night I take uh, macadamia milk. I put in the gold juice, warm it up, drink it before bed, and I slept like a baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, you warm. I don't need cannabis. Ooh, you warm. Oh, look at you. you. Hey, look he, doesn't that. Cannabis. he doesn't need it, but he, he has does, to be he does the straight, that too, though. Yeah. <laughs> straight and narrow path. doesn't need it, but he has it. Do yeah. you? Do either one of you guys drink macadamia nut milk? No. No. No, no, no. no. Yeah. I love that stuff. Very exotic. What, mm-hmm. to explain the difference between that and almond milk. Is it, is it well, calorie? I just feel like the flavor is more mild. 
Almond mil- uh, milk has a stronger flavor. Like a nutty, stronger, like you could tell it's a nutty like flavor? Like coconut milk. That's yeah, it's just, I, I don't know how I would even describe the flavor. It's just stronger. Tell me, what get, it, tell me what it feels like when it hits your lips. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a I hear smooth... Can you describe that for me, please? Blanket mm. enveloping your lips. Whoa. Wow, enveloping. I got uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, like especially a, with like a creamy silk. Look at me in my eyes when you did that. <laughs> right through you you know, know, I, the crevices. I, I would prefer macadamia nut milk anyway because it's, it's less, uh, far less common to have an intolerance to macadamias than it does to... Almonds. So I've heard a lot of good things about goat milk. I've never tried. Have you guys tried goat milk? Mm, that was a male goat, Justin. Yeah, oh, that damn. was not a female goat. I knew it. That's not milk. That was very lumpy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're the one. You're the, you know what's funny? We have. Huh. I was just thinking about this. Well, you're the the farm guy. You know what's up with the chickens sure. lately? Wow, I haven't talked about these yeah, little did you, fuckers. Did you eat them? No, uh, my friend's dog actually killed one of them. <gasps> oh shit! So that was cool. Did you see it happen, or how did that? No, happen? I. You know, and I can't give him any shit because he was watching my house while we were gone and like getting my dog out for me and stuff. And so, um, one of them because. I built like this this sort of uh, fence around it so they wouldn't fly out and eventually and we clip their wings every now and then so they don't get out as much but like inevitably there's always two of them that uh, are our our biggest producers that get out all the time. How do they so, get out? I don't know, dude. They jump really high and like add a little bit of they are bird flutter definitely. and they they figure it out, man. And so I, every time, so I'm 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 probably gonna put like a, a you know a ceiling over the top of it to to make sure it just doesn't happen at all. But yeah, one of them got out. Thankfully, it wasn't one of the high producers. You know, it was one of the you know the lower end yeah. uh, you know chickens. And so, but yeah, he <laughs> he chased it all around the neighborhood, and there was just this plume of of feathers all over underneath this person's like deck oh and i was wow. like oh no they never saw the body but you knew dog got it i wonder yeah, if your you friend knew. ate it maybe he did yeah did, he made I, soup out of it would you ever eat any of those chickens no are dude. they not to be uh, eaten they're just a i chicken. mean i've heard people that do like make a stew out of it but the meat is like really tough after a while like you have to eat them when they're real young and plump and oh my god you know, yeah it's really creepy that's terrible. It'd be like yeah. eating a milk cow you don't want to eat a milk cow yeah. really yeah yeah i mean just like you're saying there's a there's a prime age that you you want the meat on both chicken or cow so or, i would be disgusting yeah because how old you are you'd be, really, yeah. you'd be really old and tough grizzly yeah. i feel yeah. like yeah. Real grizzly. <laughs> i feel yeah. like justin would probably taste the bad he's the yeah. most organic very, doug looks really juicy still too milky yeah. for you know yeah. for his age he's aged really well he doesn't have as much meat though yeah. On him. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Justin. He'd be a delicacy. Justin's you know? organic. He's like a little drumstick. Yeah. yeah. Justin's he's organic. Like chew on it. He's a, you have to put a hot sauce I'm on I'm more him. like veal. He's a yeah. cor- <laughs> <laughs> he's a Cornish hen. <laughs> <laughs> The small ones, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Do they listen? Do you are you are they obedient now, Justin? Because there was at one point you could train you them, dude. Yeah, dude. No, it, it, it's funny to watch them because they follow when when they're out and Courtney lets them out like every now and then. They literally follow her around like she's like the mother hen, you know, everywhere she goes, and, and like she's not even feeding them or anything. They just like hang out and they look up at her and then and then like she walks back and they all follow her. Ever stuff. since you fucked him, huh? What were the, <laughs> they don't like me anymore. People, right? people don't lay know this, what you're talking the, about. Yeah, the, what was laid the, on the law? What was the? What are their names again? God, I don't even remember, dude. There's like um, Snow White, which is like our top performer. That's the only one I care about. Um, <laughs> she really puts the eggs out, and so I, I appreciate her. Uh, there's uh, there's like two two like brown ones and two black ones, so. <laughs> Uh, it's like uh, oh, so you you got the I remember, you're dude. making sure to keep it. Like what do you feed them? Diversity. What do you, you feed them? Are you yeah, are you trying keep, to be like all nice. all organic? Or are you giving them like grain and shit like that? What are you giving them? Yeah, bugs. So bugs and, and vegetables and then grains. So like, but the grains are all organic. There's this place that in mm. Scotts Valley that's like a, a a good feed store that does a lot of organic feed. So oh really? We, yeah, we get it from there. So, but yeah, like letting them graze as much as we can around, you know, the property is great, dude. They eat all fucking bugs. So I would imagine like a, a chicken producing eggs is real similar to like building muscle as humans do as far as stress and sleep totally. and eating right and all these things like that. So are, do you fuck around with this? Like do you, I, the geek in me would want to do that. I'd be like, let's oh, see. Oh, I'd give them creatine. Yeah. I'd, I'd, have, <laughs> I'd have blue blockers on them and I would be like, make sure they're doing Blue blockers, like, yeah, like red light uh, yeah, therapy at some, night. Yeah, yeah. Some juve light going on them for a little bit. Like Maybe I'll steal yours, dude. Optimize, optimizing <laughs> my chicken. Ends up barbecuing up with the red light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
yeah. shoot a little HGH chicken. in them when I'm giving my shots. I go, here you go. There you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't biohacked my chickens. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, but that's you know, that's a possibility. Bro, have you have you ever cracked open an egg from a chicken that's like pasture raised or whatever that eats bugs versus just a regular egg? Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks yeah. totally different. So the this, yolk is it's it's like an orange. It's, it's vibrant, bright. very vibrant yeah. orange. And so we've had that and we've also had like a yeah, real like electric looking like yellow. Did your kids get grossed out by that at first? Because I would think um, they would think it's different looking. I remember the first time I drank like milk straight from like the cow. It looks way. And you like look different. outside and you're like, thanks, you yeah. know. Yeah, I think I think initially because you, when you gather the eggs, like it, there's like shit on them a lot of times because you get it out of the coop. And right, so right. that that turned me off, you know, a little bit at first. But then you wash it, you just get used to it. But yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're fine with it. They're they're just they're cool. little carnivores. Oh, yeah, uh, that's cool. They'll eat anything. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd like to have some. You know, I I've always wanted to have chickens, but there's a lot of work. Dude, it's involved. A lot of work. Yeah, how often do you feed them? Every day. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, of course you. Be- <laughs> I don't know why I asked that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you leave enough. Is it like a plant? You just yeah. slaughter yeah. it. You, you don't intermittent fast with them, or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're on some scale. Or they're macros. Yeah. You know, like what's going on? Like, yeah, I don't go into that level, bro. But uh, how I many take care of them? So how many total do you have, and how much? How many eggs does that realistically produce you, like either daily or weekly? Like, we only get like, I mean, the top day would be like four eggs in a day in a day but like typically we'll have like one to two eggs like you know that's not enough so what yeah what is what is breakfast like it's like oh well it looks like uh everybody gets one except for you honey There's yeah a, well we, for- yeah we kind of wait we we do like every two days or something we'll have like the scrambled egg thing and um but thanks to butcher box you know shout out free commercial here for butcher box um <laughs> i i got bacon and you know and like uh used burger patties and stuff i'll eat those in the morning uh, alongside you know the eggs so we do a nice i haven't done the meal. burger patties yet do you like them i haven't had them yet Dude, they're delicious you, oh you have too love them okay yeah. love I'm gonna, I'll, I'll definitely get on that then. Yep, yep. yeah man so it's i mean it's not as frequent as you'd like but that's why you have to have a fuck ton of chickens you know i'm just not I'm not prepared for that mm. yeah <laughs> you know i'm not ready to have like a full-fledged farm this is like a little side project. now is it is your little coop built to where you can scale more and get have four or five more? Or is that is it are you maxed out right now on chickens? I mean, we could probably hold like maybe like twelve or so, but like I have like six, you know, and we just lost one. So um yeah, so we're down, but honestly, I, I don't know. I feel like they're I don't know that they're worth all the work. Hold on honest. a second. You have five eight chickens and yeah. they're making one to like two or three eggs a day. Yeah. He has, I, I feel like they're being lazy. Well, no, he's not. He doesn't have him on the right program, dude. He's not a great programmer when it comes to. <sighs> Maybe chickens. you need to squeeze oh, them. I feel like he's not putting any effort into it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not. This when we had chickens, project. we were they were pumping out. They were doing a good egg a day yeah. for sure. How did you do that per chicken? Well, I think we just took like care of massaging them. them yeah, we talked to them. Yeah. We pet them. Yeah, yeah, no, they they feel that. Yeah, I, I care more about my dog. I'm gonna be honest. Those that's chickens are. They probably feel that, and that's probably their dog doesn't give you the stupidest animals I've ever seen. Really? Yeah, they're just really dumb. Yeah. You know, we. I'm serious about this now. I know I joked around about this before but i really do think we need to get a cat for the for the studio no bro we caught how many mice have we caught caught so many times so far doug five so far five mice okay do you know what that means there's an infestation there's a nest it's probably like right above us bro i'm telling you right now bro it crawled up his leg (laughs) yeah yeah Come yeah. on, dude. We need a fucking. I mean, a why, cat. why do I have to be afraid every time I take a shit? Now you don't yeah, want to. Yes. I, can we get at least a small dog that's like dog's a dog's not going to do uh, anything for the for the. For sure. The mice. I think just having an animal around here will yeah. scare him away. It's, it's not like gonna, terriers. I think you watch too much dogs. Tom and Jerry. You think it's yeah. got to be a cat. We need a cat. You I know why? I think a small dog will do Here's the same trick. Here's why you trick. need a cat. Let me tell you why. First of all, it's not a cat guy. Cats naturally that's their natural enemy they don't like each other yeah. it goes way back thousands of years it goes back to cartoons Cat, yeah cats and cats and mice <laughs> mortal enemies that's number one it's just Num- like- number two you don't need to take care of it as much as a dog we can leave him alone do his thing change his litter box easy right mm. number three the furry Everybody likes furry animals. They're cute. They can come in here while I'm doing this Dander. podcast. I, got, I have I'm allergies. allergies. Yeah, huh? like, I have yeah. allergies. Yeah. If you had a cat, they spray. If you randomly. had a cat, yeah, dude, that would that would really you know suck. If you had a cat, you definitely can't have the cat in here because then I'd be fucked. Yeah. Really? That yeah. bad? Yeah, because it would it would get all on this stuff, all the foam and all this. It would and it would. I'd be sneezing. Like you that. have a lot of qualities of kids that would yeah. get picked on too. I don't know why you always make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> all I gotta do is sprinkle a little cat dander on you. <laughs> asthma <laughs> inhaler. <laughs> 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 Did oh you have God. asthma as a kid? <laughs> no, I didn't have any. Dude, I didn't have any of these issues. Yeah, had no allergies as a kid. It's all hanging out with you, man. Yeah, I got dude, gut your issues. Your fucking tummy fucking... is like rubbing off on oh. me. It's like a goddamn sorority house over here. Yeah. 
Your fucking our we're, menstruating we're, we're cycles all the it. same. Our fucking tummy, we're on the tummy cycle. Because I don't wash yeah. my hands when I go poop. That's Did I ever why. tell you this one time? Uh, so when we were getting ready for one of my clients, is she's a an operatic performer, like just oh. world, world renowned, opera, like opera, operatic. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's a operatic. Word. Didn't yeah. know that was a word. Yeah, you can yeah. look it up. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it, <laughs> Add so it to the library. she invited us uh, to go, and me and my wife like got really dressed up, and yeah, and uh, so I have this like tux and everything, and I'm getting ready at her her parents house because her parents were gone it was like in san jose whatever and so this cat was there that was her sister's and i'm in the other room i have my 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 shirt was like on top of the door and it was in there and i was getting ready in the other room shaving come back and i see this like wet mark on the bottom of my shirt and i'm just like oh fuck how did i get water on this and so i'm like like ironing it and trying to get rid of it whatever and ironed it i you know it was gone Put the shirt on. We get into the performance. It was like midway through the performance. All of a sudden, I started smelling. And you know, I was like, oh, God, what is this? It was like very, very fucking like pungent and strong and, and ammonia. And I was like, oh, my God. I just it, it hit me. Like this fucking cat sprayed like my entire suit. <laughs> what are they spraying? Piss. What, it, what is it they're, that it, they're spraying? It's, their, it's territorial. They're marking it's it. It's their pheromones? Yeah, yeah, they're marking it. It's Literally, like everybody like around cat. me was gagging. They're like, ah, ah, and I was too, and I didn't know what to do. Like, I was like, all like, nice and everything. I went, oh. Yeah, I didn't have a that's good impression with cats after that. That's dude. How old are you when that happens? Dude, that was not too long ago. Two that was before ago. we had kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah, it was like eight years ago. But Oh, yeah. you know, that reminds me. Of, did you just tough it out and wear it, or did you go and Yeah, no yeah I sat there, dude. Oh, my I God. I sat there and just stunk. You know, and like, oh and my she came God. to give me a hug after she was done performing and everything. I do you, felt so you bad. Know how much, do you know how much that smells? It's, it's the spray? worst, dude. Yes, it's it, like it's no. like a skunk, dude. It's, it's supposed yeah. to smell. Yeah. Yes, if that's what yeah. if you're like, telling me. Yes, that. it's like a skunk, bro. It's I, disgusting. I mean, I le- I, stepped, so, I stepped out for a while, you know, just to like for everybody else's benefit. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Like seriously, I would be pissed if you were some well, guy got yeah. sprayed by. Nobody a cat. knew where it was coming from. That was the best, and I was just like, oh, you're, you're, you're pretending, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretending like, to look too. Like, oh god, what is it? Who the fuck is that guy? Who's the asshole? Where's that smell coming from? Have you ever had to do that? Have you ever had to go somewhere and you had no option but to wear whatever you had on that was fucked up? from something that happened? Has that ever happened to you, Adam? Mm. Like maybe if you like came in your pants or something like something that. Something like that. Had to, like, that's that's nice weird, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, was just saying, I guess uh, that's uh, one way. a dried little that. snail line. Yeah, 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 like, no, I, have, I, I, think, I think back in my dry humping days, I might've, uh, that might have happened oh, to me. Yeah, like as a teenage boy. A like, little pre thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think there was times like where the girlfriend's parents were gone and then they came right back and you're like, oh, fuck. There's a wet spot. Yeah, yeah. Underwear soaking wet, pants are all fucking, yeah, you're saying that your parents come walking in and you're having a conversation and your shit's all fucked up, you know? Yeah. I can't think of it. I had I've never been sprayed by a cat. Oh, I've been there. Oh, dude, I had I had one once where I was I used to you know because we used to used to make sure you had protein every goddamn hour, right? So I'd take with me everywhere. I'd have a bag of protein powder and my shaker cup, and I'm wearing this like nice suit, and we were supposed to go to this nice dinner or whatever, and I pull out my shaker cup and I fucking shake it. Didn't close the lid. So it's oh no all over my shirt. So the whole dinner I had to wear my suit sh- uh, jacket closed, and I'm sweating balls in this hot ass house. But I didn't want to take it off because I had just brown speckles all over me. It looked like you know. Yeah. So that that's one time I can remember. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had. Yeah, I've told the story on here about my cousin putting on the workout shirt, right? Oh yeah. wait, wait, what did he do? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I shared yeah. the, I shared it on here. What I? was it again? Uh, that was a long time ago, though. I think we talked about that. You well, have a similar one about that guy in the gym. Yeah, uh, my that, that my, wore the shirt my cousin afterwards. was notorious for coming over my house. I used to fucking hate this about him. Oh yeah, I remember that. And he used to come over my house and he would wear all my nice clothes, like right? whatever. I if I had like a new shirt that I just got, because yeah. we were the same size at that age, right? Well, this is like a sophomore year in high school or whatever. And I was just kind of getting into working out. Uh, I had three. There was three of us: my my buddy and then my cousin. And I was showering, and we're all getting ready to go to the gym. We're gonna go work out. And I am a weirdo like that. I do shower before the gym sometimes. I know someone's hearing that, going, "What the fuck? Who showers before the gym?" I do. I like to smell good when I sweat. So I'm showering. My cousin and my friend are in my room. And you know, again, my cousin's notorious for getting in my closet. So it's not weird that I walk out of the shower and he's wearing some of my clothes. But the funny part was. I had this cut off Nike cool, you know, red shirt that I had worn 
that he was that he put on he was wearing but he picked it up off the floor it was a nut rag wasn't and it, it was a cleanup <laughs> rag and i had jizzed in the back of it and it was uh. had already hardened from the night before and so he put it on and it was all <laughs> crinkled up right it's here crusty. but yeah but he can't see yeah. it right because yeah. he chest. has no idea he has no idea and i come uh. walking out from my shower and just fucking fall on the floor dying yeah. laughing <laughs> it was like fucking sir is you right motherfucker for get putting on my clothes all the time and then my boy my other buddy like, why do you wash your shirt with chlorine oh dude like- he saw <laughs> It, and then just to Corey. see him try to get out of that shirt as fast like as he possibly bleach. could, cousin never wore my clothes again yeah. after that. Oh, well, good for good for yeah. that's what he gets. But I've never I've never had something that I can think of that I you wore. never sharded in public and you had to like oh, go the rest of the day with a little mm, bit of wetness. Sure, everybody's done that. Yeah. No, if, 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 I mean sharded to me that's like go home from work. It's bad enough. Like if that if I shit my pants, I'm going I'm going <laughs> <Yeah>. home, dude. <laughs> I'm going home. I'm yeah, done. but you yeah, there's no like out. I'm gonna tough this out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a meeting right yeah. now. Yeah. Like oh, I'll worry about this uh, shit later. <laughs> you know, so yeah. like the, I've thrown away underwear a few times. Yes, yeah, I've yeah. Done that. yeah, I would yeah. go commando first. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying. Rinsing my ass in the sink <laughs> where I couldn't go anywhere. In the and bathroom, like, just goosh, like yeah, right that, in the trash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. These underwear are no yeah, good. You're welcome. Yeah, you just commando free ball the rest because you don't want to have that that wetness in there. No, 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 can't walk around. Nobody wants that. No, not at all. Anyway, how was your training yesterday, dude? You were supposed to. You were telling me you were going to have a great workout or something. I am. My my workouts. I'm starting to catch a catch a little bit. Catch of a, what? A little bit oh. of a rhythm here. Oh, okay. I yeah. say Are catch you guys going to start like deadlift that. competition again? Or no, what? we don't want to do that. We know what. No, no, no. We know how much. No, uh, I'm going. Adam was himself old again. Remember what happened last time? He hurt himself. No, I'm. I told. I'm going for the Ryan Gosling body right now. That's what I told you I was doing. Oh, right now. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not. I'm not even. A, I'm not even going to get in that rat race of trying to be the strongest guy in the room right now. I'm just going to be the, mm. the most handsome guy in the room. Mm. That's yeah. the goal right now, mm-hmm. and it's going all right. It's just arm candy. Yeah, yeah. It's going yeah. all right right now. I, I, you know, this week has been the first week in probably what's been what seven months, eight months since the injury that I'm finally starting to feel myself. I'm really excited to take the um, you know, Everly Well test again because Me too. Right. We I know yeah. I know you were worse I, than I me. I fucked that one yeah, up. Yeah, dude, that's pretty crazy. I, I really blew that. There one. was a you know, I I there's part I was torn on this, right? So part of me was like celebrating cuz like fuck yeah. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Justin's worse than me, you know. No, what but I'm you know how that's I do it every time like a competition I'll do like really bad you know, it's like it's all up from there. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, that's a great I'm a sandbagger. No, you are a sandbagger. <laughs> sandbagger. Yeah, I think sandbagger. that's how you got your wife yeah, too. Same sandbagger. thing, right? You, first time you come out, <laughs> didn't know how to find the hole, didn't know what's going on, and it's like then you're knocking it out of the park each time that's after it. that, right? That's so, it, man. no, same same concept. But I'm I'm uh, back into my rhythm. I think I'm finally hitting my stride because my workouts, and I hadn't had this feeling yet until just recent, where I feel really good afterwards. The workouts. The last six months have really been like I need to do this work. It's like I need to do. I've this. been there. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like, I, and that's I, you know that's a good relationship with exercise. <clears throat> it really is because you're using it, you're using it for a different purpose. You're not trying to build the biggest body or whatever. You're, right. You're using it at the time for rehab and health. You know, and there, <clears throat> there's something to take away for for those out there right now that may p- potentially be listening right now that find themselves in a rut. And I, and I think this goes to a lot of the message that we talk shit about out there with the, the beast mode and the kill it all the time. And, you know, there, there's definitely a place for that, man. There's definitely a place for your elite athletes to be crushing workouts and pushing their limits like that. But then there's there's something to be said about the person who just can't seem to get a rhythm going and has got all kinds of stress in their life and all these other things that are going on with them. And you could say that was with the injury that I was going through with coming off the hormones, all the shit that I was going through. There's a lot more going on than just me, you know, building this awesome physique. So my my approach to the lifting, my approach to getting the workouts were, were more therapeutic than they were like. It helps you maintain your sanity and it helps you, it helped you with through the rehab. It did. Can you imagine it, if you didn't have that tool during that process? Think about that. Well, it, you know, a younger me would have either one hung it up completely and said, I can't, I'm not going to lift right now because I can't get after it the way, yeah. the way I could. Or I would push myself so hard and I'd get hurt mm. where- you know, the made it worse. The, yeah, the older, wiser me now has been like, okay, you know, let's. I'm not going to be the strong guy. I'm not going to be crushing workouts right now. Let's get in here. Let's get movements. Let's get some of the big lifts so I can see. And I notice a difference when I get in there and I would squat or deadlift. I mean, instantly the next day I could see the difference in my libido. Even that night, that night I could even feel kind of mm-hmm. the spike from mm-hmm. it. And so I was treating it more like that. Like, hey, I'm as I'm my hormones are all over the place right now. I felt that was one of the things. Out of all the things we do, I mean, the Juve Light, the sauna. The no, you steps, can't compare like, anything. To yeah, the I, really, you know, and, and we're I know we're pro all those things. Like all those things are beneficial. Those are all part of my protocol. They're and still I, accessories. They are. They, to, it's to the nothing. Meat. Nothing seems to trump the the training and the consistency in that. 
And I finally feel like I'm starting to reap the benefits of that. I feel like my- Are you able to get a pump now or are you starting to feel like- Yeah, this, yeah. exactly. No, I'm, I feel good. Like, you know, before I would I finish a workout and I'd be like, oh, God, I'm glad I got it done, but I didn't feel good. Like I'm getting it done with a workout yeah. and it's reminding me how I felt before. I was like, oh shit, I, a whole hour already yeah. flew by. It's time to get out of here. Dude, you know? I, I'm, I'm fucking loving the way we wrote Split. Loving it. You know what part I'm really impressed with the most is the, the unilateral- Mm. Okay, so the the way the the I gotta say this on the podcast so people know what I'm talking about. The way we wrote the program in uh, in phase one in particular, you're hitting each body part twice a week. It is a split, but it's still you're still hitting it with, with a decent amount of frequency. The first workout focuses of that body part for the week focuses on these you know compound you know kind of gross motor movement type movements, these barbell movements. The second workout of the week focuses on unilateral type movements. And not only unilateral type movements, but in, in, in different ways. For example, instead of doing a, you can say a dumbbell chest press is, a, is a somewhat of a unilateral movement because you have independent weights, but the way we designed it would be rather than pressing both weights up at the same time, you bring both you weights alternate. down and you alternate by pressing one dumbbell at a time. And I've never done that consistently. I know what the benefits are. I've trained lots of clients and I've applied that to lots of clients, but I've never applied it to myself consistently enough to really see what that does. And it's very different and it's a completely different feel. It's the perfect, it's the it's the perfect complimentary workout the second time of the week that I'm hitting that body part. Mm -hmm. And I can fucking feel it, dude. I'm getting crazy well, people pumps. Always, My body's responding like crazy. People always ask us about our programming and how we do things like that. This is kind of like the, uh, uh, what you're giving this little piece right now is a little bit of the secret sauce, like something that we know or that we all know. And that we yeah, who would think? I mean, who would? Who, most people wouldn't put that in, right? And as the, a variable. And here's the here's the logic behind that is that if you were to train, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you were going to do legs, and you were to do big compound movements like squatting, front squat, and then something else on the on the third day, that's another big gross motor movement. Sometimes, and what's common for a lot of people is to to probably overstretch themselves or push too hard. Throwing in a unilateral movement in there really it, it helps regulate that. It helps keep you from doing that because if you're doing in, in some ways it does, but in other ways it also challenges different things that are not going to get challenged with the big compound movement. Right, right. Core, core stability, control, it's time under tension. Joints, yeah, yeah, time under tension. But now. it's also from a bodybuilding standpoint. Uh, you know, when I'm doing, for example, if I do laterals with for shoulders. I can do both at the same time. Try this for yourself. Rather than doing both at the same time, hold both dumbbells, do one at a time. It's a different feel. Looks exactly the same, but because you're focusing on one side at a time, one muscle, first off, it, it promotes symmetry, which is a problem. A lot of people are not symmetrical in their strength and performance, for sure, right? One hand is stronger than the other. One leg is stronger than the other. But also visually, uh, if, you really, if you really analyze your body, here's a great way to do this, by the way. Is there's apps that let you do this. They take your body, it'll divide it in half, it'll flip, the, it'll do a mirror image, and then you can clearly see like, oh, there are some imbalances between yeah. right and well, left. You're forced to acknowledge the dominance, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see it visibly, like one side versus the other, like where the struggles lie, where the strengths lie, and then um, just just taking that time to do that, and then applying that back into like bilateral situations, like you see, okay, like where you're contributing a lot more, where you can now try and even that out. Uh, you know, that's a really great. good tip that we haven't talked about in a really long time. That I I've been asked a lot in my career is, you know, how do you develop or catch up a lagging body part or a muscle? And a, a little small tip, and again, talking about the unilateral movements, is to start with your less dominant or your weaker side and let first. that lead mm -hmm. yeah let, let that lead. lead and if you if you end up going to a point even though we don't recommend going to failure but if you go to a point where that weaker side starts to give out or fail or mechanics start to break down you stop the rep there and you mirror that on the other side don't do more mm -hmm. right the mistake that a lot of people make is they do this they do a unilateral movement they do one side they st typically you it's natural for you to always gravitate to starting the strong side yep. you, you, even if you're not paying attention you yep. will you typically will do that so you go to the dominant side first, you rep out 10 great, beautiful, hard reps, then you go to the weaker side, you know, you're already gassed a little bit because you just did the strong side already, so you're, you're already depleted a tiny bit, and it's your weaker, weaker side. You, get, you may get 10, but 8, 9, and 10 are kind of sloppy and mechanically breaking down. You'd be far better off starting with the weaker side, going to that 8 or 9, stopping there where your, where your form starts. Just copy it. Yeah, and then copy it on the other side, and that'll That's help. Right balance your, your, that's your, right. Your body. But I'm feeling great because of that. My gut health is, is really, really good from the fasting. I'm doing the high dose turmeric still, which I'm really noticing benefits from. 
Um, you know, my, my body weight is, uh, you know, about two, maybe 202. So I haven't been this heavy in a long time. Not as lean, but I'm still relatively lean. My strength is great. I pulled 525 yesterday. My arms are just for fun. I measured them. They're over 17 inches right now. They haven't been that big in a long what? time. Yeah. They Look haven't been that big you. in a long time. Look at yeah. you. Yeah. Whoa. Exactly. Look so at me. 17. Yeah. Not going to be the little guy anymore. <laughs> huh? Huh? The little guy? <laughs> <laughs> I always said it was the ripped guy. He's big on Instagram, dude. Don't give me any shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can't tell with the right angle. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. What's that filter? Venetia, the Valencia filter? The Valencia filter. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Xavier San 5 are there any benefits to fasting for a couple hours after a workout? Absolutely. Yeah, well- I do this a lot when I'm be cutting. Before we mention the fasting after a workout, it, it, let's talk about the why it, it's not necessarily to eat right after your workout. So they've done, we've been sold for a long time that post-workout, there's this, what they call, what they've coined, this anabolic window of opportunity, which mm. from a marketing standpoint- Brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah, because we can sell you some protein shakes. Right, and what they've done is they've ritualized uh, the use of a supplement, which if you ever want to sell a product and you want to sell a lot of a product, you want to you uh, include it in a ritual or ritualize it. So like first thing in the morning, do this. before, Right before bed, do this. Or And because protein powder is sold to the fitness community, they've ritualized protein powder, whereas before – they told you to take a post workout, and I know this because I, I was a, consu a fitness consumer for a long time. Before fit companies, supplement companies came up with the idea of this window of opportunity, this anabolic window of opportunity, protein powders were, were taken whenever they were taken anytime. So they'd say to you, "Take this protein powder, increase your your intake of protein throughout the day." And what ended up happening was people would just forget to take it or not take it at all. And it was quite common for people to own a jug of protein powder in their house and for it to stay there. Just collect dust. Yeah, which, because it, there was like, when do I take it? And some people would take it in the morning and they would ritualize it themselves. Yeah. But a lot of people would never take it. Now, when they when they started selling it as, you got to take this post-workout, take advantage of this. If you don't, then you're not going to build muscle. It speeds up recovery. You need the amino acids post-workout. You need blah, 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 all these different things. People started to attach it to the workouts, which if you're in fitness, that's the number one thing you're going to do. Mm. And so they started selling a shit ton of protein powders. And then on top of it, they would sell faster acting protein. Oh, if we really want to take advantage of this window, of, uh, this anabolic window. Then you need protein that is, you know, pre-digested, you know, super, you know, uh, you can assimilate it faster, all these different things. So whey protein and hydrolyzed whey and all these different, you know, formulas came out to try and capitalize on this brilliant marketing strategy. Oh, it's, it turned into what is the perfect ratio post-workout. That's like right. What gets yeah. absorbed the fastest to optimize your muscle growth, and it's turned into this huge debate. And we're all we're doing is we're really splitting yeah. hairs. Well, carbs to protein. And I think that, and I remember when, this was when I was competing, I used to get a lot of my peers that ask, um, dude, how come you don't get a shake in right after your workout, especially when you're cutting? Don't you feel like your body's going to start to be, uh, eat up muscle? And don't you want to make sure you... I'm like, dude, no, not that fast. No, yeah. dude, it doesn't work that way. In fact, if you're leaning out, I think this is a great time to not eat because what ends up happening, okay, and theoretically what happens is when we train, about 80% of your glycogen stores get utilized. So the, obviously that's... Going to be there's going to be all kinds of individual variants and it depends on what you ate before and yada yada how yada. hard your workout right how, right stuff. but for let's just say for hypothetical reasons your body depletes most of its glycogen stores right right during your workout so then that other twenty percent especially if you do what I used to do which is like twelve or fifteen minutes hit afterwards or walk for like a couple miles afterwards I depleted all the way out and so then the next optimal place for your body to get energy from is body fat. So if you're somebody who's trying to lean out, you just trained really hard, you're not exercising anymore, you're pretty much just kind of walking around or getting in your car and driving back home or getting taking a shower or doing things like that, it actually would, it would behoove you not to eat anything right now because you're trying to lean out because what your body's going to end up doing is going to look for another source of energy, which fat is a much better source. Now, the fear and why people and the way they market it to you is to get you to buy the protein powders 
because that we're afraid that it's going to start to eat our muscle. Muscle is a very expensive tissue. Your body does not want to use that as fuel. It's not, it doesn't want to go there at all. The likelihood of it going there, the, w- the only way that would happen is if you did this. You trained. You you were you were fast at going into your training session. You train hard in a session. Maybe you take a break for a little bit and you come back two hours later again and then you train really fucking hard again. Like now you might be at risk of like utilizing some muscle because you're pushing the body after everything's been depleted. And even then it's it's still not an optimal place for fuel. No, and, and you're again, even what you're talking about is splitting like totally yeah. splitting errors. Right. Ultimately it's up to how many calories you consume the whole day and a few other things. So Basically, and here's okay. Here's here's another reason why consuming right after your workout not only is really not going to help you, but it may actually harm you. Inflammation, right? If you mm-hmm. if you are prone to uh, systemic inflammation, if you have gut health issues, when you're working out, your inflammatory markers do rise. This is totally natural. When though, and that's systemic. So this systemic inflammation rises a little bit. That means if you already have gut issues, your gut is probably even a little bit more inflamed than it normally is. The worst thing you could do is consume food with an inflamed gut because the likelihood that that you're going to have leaky gut where the food moves through the you know through the the gut barrier into the bloodstream and then your body starts to identify that as a foreign, foreign invader. invader and develops its own immune response and now you've got more food intolerances is, is quite high. This is why I will speculate that so many people in fitness who've been working out for 10 or 15 years are all of a sudden can no longer have dairy. Mm-hmm. Dairy's the biggest one. When you talk to anybody who's been working out for a long all period of time, protein forever. I think it's because they yeah. would just they would have these insane hardcore workouts, yeah. which would give them more inflammation in the gut in particular. Then they consume a protein powder, which is already quick digesting, and they fucking slam it too. It's they, not, yeah. yeah, you. I mean, my my buddies were carrying it in their gym bag. And as soon as they get there, I mean, they're barely catching their breath from their lift and they're whoo, shuttling it in there as fast as they possibly can. That's right. So, so, and that can become a problem. Now, as far as recovery is concerned, studies have been done, of this, done on this and they show that regardless of when you eat, you're going to replenish your glycogen and repair muscle. So it really doesn't matter if you have it right after your workout or four hours after your workout. But like Adam said, the benefit would come from if you're going to have another workout later in the day, because then it does make sense to try to replenish glycogen and amino acids so that you have energy or mm. fuel for the next workout. But if you're working out once a day like most people, it doesn't really matter uh, if you consume right after. The benefits to fasting afterwards, personally, the times I recommend people, because I usually tell people, eat after your workout, don't eat, eat after your workout, really doesn't make a big difference. It's totally up to per- personal preference. But when I do tell people to not eat is when I have clients who have really bad gut issues. When I have people who... We're trying to figure out what's going on with them. They're having issues with digestion. They're having all these displays of inflammation in their body. These are the people that I tell, hey, look, after your hard workout, I want you to relax and I want you to chill and wait about two to four hours before you eat uh, your, your next meal because we don't want to create a, a bigger problem uh, with your gut. So that would be the biggest benefit. But other than that, you know, the fat loss, I mean, you're... You're really bringing it down to the to the you know the the point zero one percent of whether or not it's going to make a difference, which you, which basically means no. I, I found it very beneficial when I was cutting, man, to not to not eat afterwards. It was it just an easy way for me. I've Cut told calories. I've, yeah, exactly. I've talked on this show before that when I'm in a bulk, I'm carrying myself at two hundred thirty plus pounds. It requires me to eat forty five hundred to five thousand minimum calories a day to maintain that. Which means I'm I've got to be eating almost every two hours, and not because I'm trying to I need to eat every two hours because of this stupid window or that's what my my muscles need to be fed. It's just because to get fucking five thousand healthy calories in, you just get those yeah, calories in right. You just got to constantly be eating like that. So I at, when I'm in the bulk post workout, I am consuming something almost immediately after within the first twenty or thirty minutes. Not because I'm trying to catch an anabolic window, because I know I can shuttle something in, and then within thirty minutes to an hour again, I can eat again. So I'm doing that on the bulk. Now on the cut, that's the first meals that I get rid of right away. It's like right, it's easy. Yeah, it's the easiest ones because most of the time when I am training really hard, it is sometimes hard to eat food right afterwards. So it's like, oh, this I'll just stretch this out. And then I try and challenge myself actually how far I can stretch that before I eat the next big refeed meal. And then I eat that nice big refeed meal. And then I go take a nice walk for a half hour, hour. And I find that very beneficial. Next question is from CMA Pasquale. What are the benefits of keeping NEAT relatively high even during a bulk? You know, when I was younger, 
because my goal was always to try and gain size and, and weight, I was always worried about burning too many calories outside of my workout. So mm-hmm. I would literally eat a lot, lift weights, and then re- eliminate all unnecessary activity because I was under the assumption that I had to you know, not burn calories so that I could use what I ate uh, to build muscle. Years later, um, I started doing a little bit of cardio because I started working out with this buddy of mine. And after workouts, he liked to do like these long walks. And because he was a cool guy and we'd have these great conversations, I started doing this. And the walks sometimes would be up to three miles, four miles. Um, they were kind of quick paced. And because I was so, my cardiovascular was so bad and because we had just finished working out and I was so heavy at these, during these periods of time, I found that it took a little while to build up the almost the stamina to to be able to do this without being like, oh my God, I'm walking kind of fast. But what I noticed was I actually built more muscle. No joke. I actually got in the gym, had better workouts, felt better mobility, and just generally felt like I could assimilate my food better. And I started to realize that, you know, uh, being healthy is a better place to be when you're trying to get your body to adapt in any direction. Mm -hmm. Whether you're trying to get leaner or you're trying to build more muscle, you want to be healthy. Now, can you go too far with this? Absolutely. If you push your knee so much that your body's adapting to become efficient, like you're doing lots of cardio, well, that's very different. But the thing I see a lot of people do, especially guys trying to bulk, is they're afraid to do any cardio whatsoever because it burns calories. And so what happens is their health is actually their health actually worsens because all they do is lift. And then everything else they do is completely sedentary. And I'll, I'll, I've used this example before. You could have, have the hardest, best workouts of your life, the best programming in the world, and then lay in bed the rest of the day. Conserve all the calories you want. Watch what happens. You'll actually lose muscle. Well, I think there's a very mm. simple way to look at this. I mean, uh, the body's got a bunch of different systems. The digestive system is just one of those systems. One of the ways to optimize that system is to be standing upright and moving. If you're sitting you down, things to move, right? If you're sitting down and you're consuming food and then you're sitting down all the time, like that system is not going to be operating optimally. And it, part of the digestive process, when you stand up like that, gravity pulls down. It helps that. And you, if you're going to be moving blood flow, oxygen, everything moving around, which is just going to help nutrients getting to your muscles, it just makes sense to me that this would help help me in building muscle by eating and then also constantly kind of moving throughout the day. Not doing cardio, pushing the body super hard because now that's a- You're not pushing like for hardcore Right, that's a, that's a stress. I just picture a bunch of bros like going on these nature walks, seeing the sunset together. That's yeah. the future of bros though, dude. I'm <laughs> telling like, you right now. It's like, take your bro on a walk. You know? <laughs> take your let's, bro let's, on a let's walk. Make a, let's make like a, like a shirt for that or something. <laughs> take your bro on a yeah, walk. Yeah, yeah. So take no, I, walk. I think it's just, it's a very simple practice for you to do is to just make a habit of getting up, walking around, doing neat. And it, to me, it's just logical that that is only going to make the uh, assimilation of food. Yeah. Uh, it's and- important for digestion. I mean, it, the, the whole process, like you just, your, your body needs to function like it's supposed to function, you know, whether you're bulking or cutting, you know, either, either or. And so we're meant to move. And when you start eliminating movement, you know, you're, you're, you're prioritizing things. things start shutting down and your body naturally just prunes things. And so it's not necessarily beneficial for you, even when you're trying to build muscle, like it's going to, it's going to show that like your priority for overall movements going to go down. So now what, now I'm not going to, I'm going to really hold on to these mm-hmm. calories and, and you know, now, now like this is going to turn into a different type of uh, tissue. I'm now, yeah, I, I, I've always built more muscle on a bulk when I've done a good, decent amount of neat. Again, it's not hardcore cardio, but I notice. Well, I th- notice if I'm sedentary yeah. all day, I build less muscle. That's the key, though. The key is that I think there's... Yeah, it's d- not intensive. Right. right, and it's who I'm talking to, right? So I, it's it's tough when we answer questions like this generically to a bunch of people. Like, if I have the, you know, the ectomorph body type kid and he's super active and he's got a twitch and he's constantly moving and he burns 5,000 calories and he's having a hard time even consuming 5,000 calories and he's asking me, how do I bulk at him? You know, and I hear you talking about neat. Should I keep my knee up? Like, well, no, I'm probably not going to encourage that kid to move even more because he's already having a hard time hitting what his body needs just to maintain his mass. Yeah. So, but for the most part, for the average person, yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. keeping your movement up and your neat is beneficial, especially if you can keep up with the calories. Yeah, and even and to take it even a step further, take that same ectomorph kid, take that hard gainer, super skinny kid. And if we could just, if we could clone him and we had two and we could test this out, one of them lifted weights, you know, ate X amount of calories and then 
eliminated all activity, sat down and played video games all day long, conserved energy. Mm -hmm. And then we took the other kid and had him do the exact same workout, exact same food intake. And they also did not crazy amounts of meat, but they were relatively active throughout the day. I will argue that the one that's moving is going to build more muscle than the one that does right. nothing but lift weights once well, a day. you might have a little more mass on one side, but how much fat is that in contrast to the other one? You know, that might be a little more lean, but also built. You're just healthier. You're just yeah, healthier. Healthy. Like, I don't care what your goal is. I don't care how extreme your goal is. If you start from a healthy base, or if, at least if you try to be healthy within that, because of course, if you, once you start to push your body, you have to kind of you have to you know move health aside a little bit, right? If you're an extreme athlete or whatever, you're not going to be the healthiest. Mm -hmm. But if you pay attention to it and kind of keep your body running the way it's supposed to, you'll, your body will adapt better. And that's what we're asking for when we're trying to bulk. We're trying to adapt by building muscle. And so movement is a part of that. You know, you got to move other than just the weights that you lift, you know, once a day. Next up is Kristen Amy. In one of the episodes with Lane Norton, you say in order to lose weight, you must be in a caloric deficit. You then go into a reverse dieting discussion where you're saying calories increased tremendously and activity decreased, yet pounds were still oh. shed. Why are these two topics not contradicting each other? In that second part, so the first part of it is you got to be in a calorie deficit. The second part is, uh, oh, but then you reverse diet and you reduce activity and people are getting leaner. How the hell does that even make sense? Well, Build a muscle. You're, you're, yeah, we're speeding up the metabolism. Now, it's not as simple as increasing calories and decreasing activity. Right. Okay, It's increasing calories slowly and decreasing total activity, like tons of cardio, but changing the activity to focus on- Changing the stimulus. The adaptation of yeah. building muscle. And so in, in that case, we're speeding the metabolism up and you're not subverting or you're not going around the caloric deficit- Law, because that is a law. That's a law of thermodynamics. You, you, you literally cannot, you can't create and destroy energy. It has to be. It's only transferred. So, if your body is burning body fat, it's because you're burning more calories than you're consuming. You're in a deficit, and the way you create a deficit is either by taking in less than you're burning, or burning more than you're taking in. And when you reverse diet properly and change your activity properly so that you speed your metabolism up, you can you you can create a bigger deficit that way than by simply cutting calories and just trying to move more. Mm -hmm. Because by moving more, you are burning a lot of calories, but you're doing it manually. And over time, your body may adapt to that or try to adapt to that by becoming more efficient with the calories that you are consuming, aka slow its metabolism down. And I've seen this many times. I've had female clients that were doing one to one and a half cardio hours of cardio every single day on top of resistance training every single day who couldn't consume more than 1200 calories a day anything over 1200 calories and they would they would gain weight and the reason was even if you even if you could consume 15 to 18 that's still really low for that much activity super low right. and it's why because the type of activity they were doing was was asking their body to become efficient with calories. They'd been low calories for so long that their body's like, we better become efficient with calories. And they just slowed their metabolism down. And I've taken those same girls and over the course of months, this doesn't happen overnight because I swear to God, if you, if you make this change overnight, you will get massive weight gain. But over the course of months, I reduced their, calorie, their, their cardio, reduced their cardio, reduced their cardio, and then eventually eliminate their cardio, change their resistance strength so it's total strength and muscle building focused, no supersets, no circuits, none of that, you know, wad training or any of that right. stuff. It's straight sets, bodybuilding, muscle building type training. And I slowly increase their calories. Those same girls, I'll have a meeting almost 2000 calories and they're leaner. Mm -hmm. And it's not because we, we've magically erased a, a law of physics or, or countered it. It's because I made their metabolism faster. Right. Same thing though. Same exact thing. It's really it's it, it highlights though how challenging this is mentally for people to make that switch. Though. Right. You know, like even even that I think that was a great episode where we we dove into this, and I think it was uh, I thought it was a really good explanation of how to do this, but still people have a hard time connecting. Like oh, this yeah. doesn't make sense to me. You mean to tell me that I'm going to run less? I'm running every day for an hour for weeks. Well, because mathematically, you know, it's hard to comprehend because like, how the body you know adapts and 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 really like you know changes in this whole process. Like it's hard for them to kind of comprehend that process. So I, I under this this always comes back up. These questions, you know, in that whole process of like 
like reverse dieting because, you know, I, I'm going to eat more now yeah. and you're telling me that, you know, I'm going to eventually, you know, I'm going to lose more body fat. This you time. have to shift your goal, though, even if your your long term goal may be to lose body fat or to lean down. You, your, your focus has to change when you're in this place, when your metabolism is in this place. Like if you're a, if you're a female trying to lose body fat and you're in a healthy place as far as your metabolism. So I'll give you an example of that would be. You know, somebody who's 165 pounds or so and she needs to lose 20 pounds, but she eats 2,800 to 3,000 calories. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's, I can take that client and I could just start to cut calories, make better choices, start lifting weights, and, and we could just start to shred body fat. But that, and uh, that's not the case. Normally, what I get is somebody who's 160 pounds, needs to lose the same amount of weight, but is only consuming 13 to 1500 calories and is already trying, has been trying to do that on their own for a long time. And their method of doing that is by running it off. And what they've done is they've, they've now trained their body. You've told your body to get efficient at that. And it's now adapted. Now that person, you know, in order for us to get a healthy metabolism and then eventually go back to this cutting calorie thing, we have to shift our focus. Our shift, our focus is no longer, let's lose that weight right now. Let's repair your metabolism. One of the best ways for us to repair that metabolism is to reduce the cardio to little to none, start to increase your strength tra training while you're slowly starting to increase calories. And then you can come back and start to reduce calories. It makes and, it so much easier. Right, and or add some sort of cardio in there. Right, and, and we have to be careful too. And I mean, the terms we use, damage metabolism, repair the metabolism, the reality is your metabolism is working the way it's yeah, supposed to. It's right? supposed to do that. It's not broken. Um, I mean, you can go in such a, you can go down a path far enough to where you do have hormonal issues and you do start to cause problems. But it, it, for most of the, these cases, really it's it's doing what it's, what it's designed to, which is adapt, mm. and it's trying to become more efficient. It's trying to make your body run on less because you're telling it to. You're telling it that, hey, I'm going to move a lot all day long and the kind of movement that I'm doing doesn't require lots of muscle and strength. And I'm feeding myself very little. So your body's like, okay, we need endurance. Doesn't require lots of muscle. Excellent. And this person's not eating much. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you more stamina and more endurance. That doesn't require lots of muscle. And, and because you're eating so little, that's great. We'll reduce your muscle mass or have your muscle burn less calories. And now we've made you a more efficient you know, calorie machine. So it's like you're literally taking your your six you know, cylinder engine car and you're, because you're sending a certain signal, it's becoming a hybrid. So your body's doing what it's supposed to, but you can change that to do the opposite as well. And it always blows me away when I see people do this. Jessica is a great example. This is my girlfriend. We were looking at her, her, how she used to eat before and how she eats now. And it's crazy. She used to do seven to eight hours of cardio a week and she was consuming about 12 to 1300 calories. Now she does no cardio and the girl consumes like 2300 calories a day and is leaner. She's actually like 12 or 13 pounds lighter right. than she was before. It always blows me away. You want to build yourself a gas guzzling V12 is what you want. It, you know you what? You want one of them pussy I'll ass tell you, fucking hybrids. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, in the context of modern life, Too that is true. Bullshit. Now, if we were if we were like living in a desert and food was scarce and yeah, we were 500 like, years ago. Yeah, we <laughs> would we would actually want the slower metabolism. We yeah. would want to be more thrifty. We'd want to be more efficient. But in the context of modern life, a, a faster metabolism is probably, you're probably better off. Next up is Tristanator. Sal, why haven't you competed in bodybuilding or physique? <laughs> <laughs> this is an oh, amazing question. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. He's, oh. uh, pretty, he's pretty much just You a, are a fanboy in everything, oh dude. Explain God. yourself. Oh my God. He's just an Instagram model. Yeah. yeah that's no, why. I'll tell you what. There's, he's got one angle. There's two reasons. <laughs> there's two reasons why. One, because we don't want to have two physique competitors on the. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, one of them is I wouldn't do very well. I know what it what it takes to compete at that level and or to compete at any level and how you look and all that stuff. I don't have that kind of physique. But really, the se the second reason is the main reason. I've never had a desire ever to flex and pose or to stand and have people judge my physique on a stage. I've just I've never, I've never, ever, ever had that that inclination. If I was ever going to compete in everything that anything that had to do with, you know, muscle building, it would be something where I had to lift something. Like I would want to like show what I could do rather than like show what I look like. It just never felt. It, it wouldn't feel good, you know what I mean, to stand on stage yeah. and be. And I'm I'm not criticizing anybody who does this. I I respect it and I I appreciate it when other people do it. But for me, 
I'm not even talking. You know, I'm not even expressing myself. I'm just standing there while people are looking at me, going, "This looks good. Yeah. That doesn't look good." This, ew. You know, like like that's it's such a weird thing. You know, to, when you think about it from that perspective. Well, for you, me, it is. You know. Well, you also touched on something that I think it's important that I find really funny that people still don't believe me when I talk about this. That, you know, we just we none of us in this room actually have a men's physique type of body type. Doesn't mean that one of us couldn't fucking work really hard at it and present and get up there and actually compete with people that was the point of why i did it right was to show that even somebody with that don't have that doesn't have superior genetics for this sport could still put the work in it and still get up there and still hang with some of the best of the best but by no means do i think i have that nor do i think any of my my co-host have the physique to, physique to do that and you're an all natural guy so you're not looking to do, get on anabolics, which would absolutely help you if you were trying to shape your body out of its unnatural mm-hmm. l- look already. So I think that it's 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 funny when you when we look at uh, bodybuilding, we just we don't look at it the same way that we look at every other sport. And you know, this is because you're not getting out there and you're not hitting somebody and you're not training like an, a normal athlete. But there are some similar rules that do apply to this as as a sport, and that is like there are s- specific body types that are going to do better in that sport. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that somebody else, you know, doesn't mean like a Rudy can't come in and be a football player. Doesn't mean that he did, but it, it does It does mean, though, that he's at a disadvantage than the average person. Well, I can get, like, I get why some people do it. You know, maybe, there's a lot of people who do it who obviously never do very well. Most people, right? Most people who compete on stage don't do very well. They don't have the, they don't have the right genes, the bone structure. Maybe they have the wrong training diet, you know, whatever. But I get why they do it. It motivates them. They love the the training and the dieting and all that stuff for it. They love the prep and I get all that. And I actually enjoy the dieting aspect of it because of the challenge, but I just wouldn't want to ever get on stage. Now I, you know, I've, I've done it before. I've tested how shredded and how dialed in I could get my body and I did it when 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 we maybe put together you should the first repost time. some of your old pictures so people could see that because yeah. people may not know that because that, to me that is the that's the part that I was the most addicted to right. that, that I enjoyed like I absolutely loved the science of dialing myself into that level bringing myself into a sub three percent body fat timing it uh, for a certain day but the actual getting up on stage and prancing around. That shit I fucking hated. That's what I'm saying. To I the have, point that I didn't even, I rarely, and they used to, everyone give me shit that I, I was for sure the worst pros, posing pro out there because I just didn't care about it. Mm-hmm. For me, I knew what I was trying to do. I was trying to present or trying to bring a better physique. You had a pretty good turnaround, dude. You know, <laughs> yeah. You're so hard on yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, could, I couldn't turn, a, what is it, left? What is yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was like an turn, was an right. ambi turn. Yeah, yeah, no. You were not a bi turner. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, um, I did it for the first MAPS program. So when, when, when I wrote MAPS Anabolic, you know, Doug and I got together and talked about like, okay, how are we going to market this program? Nobody knows who you are except for the local community. I, I'd run gyms and stuff and people in the gym industry kind of knew me. But other than that, I had no authority. So how am I going to sell an online fitness program? That's, and I knew the program itself was phenomenal. I'm like, I, and I would tell Doug, like, if we could just get people to try it, it's going to blow people away. But how are we going to get people to even pay attention? Because I'm not a pro bodybuilder. I'm not some huge jack. I have no authority because nobody's heard me say anything. They don't know that I know what I'm talking about. So, you know, our ideas were like YouTube videos, podcasting. And look, we need to take pictures of you because people are going to want to see what you look like. Because the reality is in this industry, if you're a smart dude selling a fitness program or a supplement and you don't look the part, a lot of people aren't going to want to buy your stuff. It's just the bottom line. Well, they're not even going to listen to what you have to say. They're not going to want to hear it at first. And so I said, okay, I need to break through that, right? I need to break through that. So I knew that there's no way I'd play the size game. I was, I'm was i natural, and I'm, I'm not going to push my body that way anyway. And I can't anyway. Even if I was to go on gear, I could take all the gear in the world, and I would never look like, you know, you would never look at me and be like, oh, my God, that guy's fucking massive. just wasn't going to work. So I'm like, I'm going to play the shredded game because – you know, I have a, I can get shredded. I know, my, I know how to read my body very well. I didn't, by the way, I didn't track when I did any of this. I did this very much on an intuitive basis. Watch my body, watch how I respond to change my diet on a day to day basis. And I knew I could get shredded. And I also have this quality where my muscles get, uh, certain parts of my body get very strided at higher body fat percentages. So I told Doug, I'm like, my goal is to get so shredded, sick shredded that people will look at that and then that'll stand out. And so, and that's what I did. And I actually got, I was a lot of fun. And that during that period of time, that's when 
Adam and I were in contact with each other right. and we talk shit to each other because yeah. I think he was getting Exchanging ready for a show. And, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah. I was when I was getting ready for my first show. Yep. At the same time, you're cutting down for the the photo shoot. Exactly, and and I did. I got super. I don't know what my body fat percentage was at, but I I had you know veins in my abs and striated glutes and the whole deal. And we took pictures, and it was pretty awesome. And I enjoyed that whole process. But never, ever, ever in a million years have I ever considered like standing on a stage and getting you know judged by my physique. Far more likely to do a powerlifting event. You know, arm wrestling, jujitsu, something like that. But yeah, no. I've talked about doing another one. We'll see. Maybe one day I'll do another one. Maybe when I turn forty, it'll be like a cool forty thing to do. Mm. Get out there and see if I can still compete at forty years old. That'd be awesome. Right. Check man. this out. We have a bunch of free guides. We have a guide on building your calves, building your legs, getting a good midsection. We have a guide that teaches you about the proper way to do high intensity interval training. We got like twelve guides. They're all free. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Get one or get all of them. Doesn't matter. Will cost you nothing. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at MindPumpMedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>